Hi folks, hope you're okay today. I'm gonna get on now. Okay. I thought I'd let you see the sun come down with me. I thought I'd show you what a master that is at his job, what he's doing then. So, I'm going to be reading my notes. I'll try and talk to you, but I am reading my notes now. Uh, as I read them, um, I'll be putting them in my paper. So, standing seminar by Theism, Naturalism and Rationality, Norman Blind Tinker, January 7th, 2013, reading a lecture uh, by Plantinga. Next lecture, Ernest Sosa. This is a scholar, uh, a critique by Abbas on Dale Allison, uh, who's a scholar, very um, uh, capable scholar. Allison thinks this is quite a top scholar. Allison thinks that there is every reason to think that Luke 
represents Paul's res resurrection appearances. Michael P. Levine on you, on David you. Ehrman, not Bob Ehrman, but John Ehrman, the Hume scholar. Ehrman misses what is distinctive about Hume's argument because he ignores the fact Sorry. Basically saying, um, critiquing uh, John Ehrman uh, the Hume scholar Michael Levin is saying that to understand Hume it's got to be embedded in his overall philosophy of empiricism. So I'll be using this in the essay. Hume thinks that the testimony, no matter how reliable, can never establish the occurrence of uh, an occurrence of a lifeless event in accordance with the principles of posteriori reasoning. Reasoning that is a type of causal reasoning. David Hume himself says, being the general maxim that no objects of any discoverable uh, sorry, I can't read my writing, but that all the inferences which we can draw from one to another are founded merely on our experiences of the constant and regular uh, cognition. It is evident that we ought not to make an example expl explanation to the maxim in favour of human testimony. I'll be using that if I can decide from my notes. Dr. Craig Keener is going to be key in my essay. He's a New Testament scholar on the historicity of the Book of Acts. One of the most important insights afforded by the past century scholarship into the interpretation of Luke Acts is that we should read it in two together. Um, but Keen is going to be uh, key in my essay. I'm going to do this for an hour, then I'm going to start writing. This is Habermas's PhD. I read half the PhD. The strength of Habermas is he's very strong on um, theology, strong on critiquing you. Uh, the weakness of Habermas is when he comes to talking about the dying and rising gods and critiquing that, he doesn't go to primary sources, he uses mainly scholars. Um, So I've had to do my research on the primary dying, rising gods, looking at primary sources. He believes that reason comes before faith. I believe epistemologically faith becomes before reason. All of us have faith. Um, even skeptics have faith. We have faith that reality is there etc. before even cognition begins, I think, anyway. His PhD is very good on the history of the topic. Definition of a miracle.
We just done you and miracles and the PhD, which goes into depth on that. Um, you said a miracle is a violation of the laws of nature and as a firm and unalterable experience has established these laws the proof against a miracle from the very nature of the fact is as entire as any argument from experience can possibly begin be imagined Very good PhD on um, David Hume. Uh, David Hume's stuff here about Jainism. Jainism. Uh, David Hume um, gave criteria about if a miracle did happen, how we can analyse whether that miracle happened. But Habermas points out that the standard that uh, David Hume had for miracles, whether a miracle could happen. Um, once you take that standard and you, you apply it, uh, you applied it to Jainism, but yet Jainism fulfills uh, that it fulfills uh, Hume's assessment, really, uh, Hume's methodology of assessing miracles. It, it actually passes the test. there in that PhD which is very helpful. Uh, Kevin, a uh, pure scholar. by Brooke Foss Westcott, London 1891. He writes, the subjective religion brings with it no element of progress and cannot lift man out of himself. Briefly,
where the gospel of the resurrection harmonizes in itself with objective and subject elements of religion. I would have liked to explore that in more detail because I think that's really interesting comments. The authority of testimony is supplemented by that of the instinct with which within us which recognizes that the idea of divine revelation corresponds with the essential wants of man. I find that an interesting epistemology and I think that's worth exploring but I won't be able to do it in this paper. This is Anthony Flew, uh, the writer of his book, uh, kind of ghost writer. He talks about how he refuted positivism. about new atheism they failed to address the issues of origins of rationality embedded in the fabric of the universe of life etc it would be fair to say that the new atheism is nothing less than a regression to the logical positivist philosophy that was renounced by even its most ardent proponents. That's by Anthony Flew's ghostwriter who's writing on behalf of Anthony Flew. About Bertrand Russell, Catherine Tate, Bertrand Russell's daughter said, I could not even talk to him about religion. Revelation by Herman Bubble, gave way to, the, to that of evolution. Darwin was led to his agnostic naturalism as much by the misery with which he observed in the world as by facts which scientific investigation brought under its notice. Anthony Flew, who was an atheist who moved away from atheism to, theism, uh, to deism. Sorry. The same people who complained about the Inquisition and witness being witches being burned at the stake were now enjoying all a little heresy hunting of their own. End of quotes. That's about the atheist on Anthony Flew, an atheist who turned to deism.
Crossons lectures, uh, four lectures. We're interested in uh, cover political, social, and cultural history on the side of the war. Come back to that. Sorry.
an academic, uh, she got converted and the truth of the conversion made her realise all the stuff she learned as an academic was just rubbish. Folks, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna write, read through my last bit of notes now, and then I'm gonna uh, try and write. Okay, sorry for falling asleep. Uh, I just hope uh, I can get the essay done, and I hope it's gonna be a blessing to you. Falling asleep, I just might have five minutes nap, and then uh, crack on. All right. <laughs> 